Hi there, welcome to another Code Zong video here on the Tech Zong channel. We're going to go ahead and pick it up here in the backwoods forest where we left off from the last video. Let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so it looks like we've got a handful of things that we can equip, but it doesn't look like it's recommending that we do anything. So we'll just go ahead and press play. If we need to come back here and do that over, we can do that. We are going to rid the meadow of ogres today. Let's take a look and see what they're telling us to do. We'll just get a little closer here to the screen on this side. It says, don't waste your cleave on only a few enemies. Be smart with distance two to catch as many as possible. So that sounds kind of interesting and different. Let's go ahead and start the level, see if it gives us any hints in the code. And it does. We've got the yellow arrows. Of course, that's always a clue that we need to look a little bit closer at what they're telling us here in the code notes. So let's get kind of close here and take a take a closer look and see what they're telling us so the first thing it's doing is it's it's starting off a loop it's setting an enemy to the find nearest enemy and then it's saying replace this with your own code it says okay so we're going to replace this with our own code i think that means that they want us to go ahead and comment that out uh let's see so find the distance to the enemy with distance two. All right, so we know how to do that. So we'll say that the distance is set to the distance two method here, where our target is the actual enemy that we just set up here on this line. If the distance is less than five meters, it says, then we'll cleave, if cleave is ready. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna say first, if the distance is less than five. So that's our first. Now our second is an embedded if statement where we say if, let's see, is it is ready, cleave, then we cleave. Do we need a target? It looks like we do need to set a target. Self cleave is, yeah, so we'll set that to enemy, else, We'll just do a regular attack. So what you've got here is you've got embedded if statements. Of course, we did start to look at that in the last video. We've got if, if the enemy exists, then we start to track the distance. And if the distance is less than five, then we do this embedded if else statement where we're, if, if we're saying only in the event that the distance is less than five, if cleave is ready, then we cleave, else we attack. So we could optionally set an else statement here after the distance being less than five. If the distance is less than five, we can do something else. We could shield or we can do another kind of attack. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna see if that's all that we need to do for now. And we can try that out by pressing the run button. Let's see what the run button does for us. Oh, hold on now. Right away it says that I've got an error. So let's go ahead and stop it. It says try self.distance2. Oh, you know what I did is I actually spelled the variable incorrectly. So let's get really close here and look at line eight. It's saying, hey, it looks like you don't know what you're talking about here, but I actually do know what I'm doing. I know what my goal was here. The problem is that I actually misspelled my variable name. Let's correct that. That should actually work out a little bit better. Let's, pr try, let's press run. Let me start this over again. And we'll see if that uh, puts us in better shape. So it's running. So far, I haven't died. All right, I did the cleave. Cleave isn't ready yet, so he hasn't done it. I took quite a beating, though. All right, here comes some more guys. Cleave is probably ready here. It is. Another group is probably going to come up here pretty soon. But it looks like I'm good. I, I had some success. Let's go ahead and press submit, and we'll see that replay. Should go a little bit faster this time around. So a cleave is ready on the outset. This time it's not ready. So I take a little bit of a beating and I sit there and kind of attack one by one. It's kind of slow, but I make it out okay. And then the next group is going to come in. By the time the next group comes in, my cleave attack is ready. And then that's it. So we that's pretty similar to what we've seen before. So there's nothing too terribly new there. Let's go ahead and continue and see what faces us next. All right, so our next one is way up here. Let's have a look and see what we've got. We're going to loot a gigantic chest while surrounded 
by a swarm of ogre munchkins. All right, let's press play and see what that's like. So uh, I've still got a handful of things available, but it's not recommending that I equip anything new, so I won't. I'll just go ahead and press play. We need to break open the chest, and we need to stay alive. We don't always stay alive some of the time, so there may be some trial and error here. Let's see what it tells us. The ingredients to beat this level are... If else statements, we're familiar with those. Distance, we're going to be using the less than operator. We're going to be using cleave again. And we're going to be doing a while true loop. And we're going to be doing the attack on the target of the chest. We're going to put them all together to break the chest and survive the munchkin onslaught. So let's start the level. Let's see if it gives us any hints in the code. It does. We start with our loop. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the distance to the nearest enemy. It says that if it comes closer than 10 meters, then cleave it, else attack the chest by name. Okay, let's go ahead. So I think that means that as the enemies are surrounding us, as they're coming into the playing field, it's likely that we're going to be taking a beating from them and not really attacking them until our cleave attack is ready. Instead, we'll be focusing our attacks on the chest. So let's see if our theory is correct here, and let's go ahead and start coding. Per the hints here in the code window, check the distance to the nearest enemy. We're going to say that uh, we'll set a value of distance equal to distance to. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. We got to first identify the nearest enemy. So let's do that. All right. So that sets a variable of enemy to the nearest enemy. Now, what we want to do is we want to say we want to say if there is an enemy. Right? We only want to act if there is an enemy. If the enemy comes closer than 10 meters, cleave it. Let's do something else that I'm forgetting. Let's set the... Hold on. Let me go back here. So if there is an enemy, then we will set the distance to... Distance to... Enemy. And then we'll say if... Distance is, what do we say, less than 10 meters? Then we will attack... Oh, I'm sorry, then we will... Hold on. Let, let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me read my notes. If it comes closer than 10 meters, cleave it. All right, but we only want to cleave if cleave is ready. So I'll say, if is ready, cleave. Then I will cleave the enemy. Okay? So that's a lot of embedding of if statements. It doesn't necessarily tell us in our instructions here that we have to do that. But I'm just sort of following the pattern that we've established in previous, uh, uh, previous exercises. So there's a lot of embedding of branching here. This is probably a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. But I just want to make sure that I account for all possibilities here. So here's what we're doing. Just to recap. We're saying first set a variable called enemy to the nearest enemy. If that enemy actually does exist, meaning there is an actual nearest enemy. Then evaluate its distance. If the distance is less than 10, check to see if cleave is ready, and if it is, then cleave it. It says else, attack the chest by name. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to say that I will go ahead and attack the enemy. I, I, will, I will attack the chest on a number of different situations. The first one will be if my cleave isn't ready, then I will attack chest. I will also attack the chest, however, with another else statement by saying if the distance is not less than 10, then I will attack the chest. And then lastly, if I don't even find an enemy, then I will attack the chest. So this is probably not exactly what they had in mind when they put this exercise together, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to account for all possible scenarios to make sure that I can get that chest open as fast as possible. Now let's see if I've overcomplicated things by pressing run and see if we actually pass. So I'm beating up that chest right away. Munchkins aren't close yet. They're not close yet. I'm still going after that chest. Now they're going to start getting close to me. Not yet, though. All right, there they are. So I just cleaved a whole bunch of them. I'm still working on that chest. They're swarming, but they haven't gotten close enough yet. Here they come. Cleave was ready, so I got him. 
I think we're on the right track here. So let's go ahead and press submit and we'll see this kind of play out in full screen. So we saw that happen already. Of course, we also saw that there was another attack and I managed to survive this one too. Let's see how it plays out for the rest of the time here. Looks like it did exactly what we were hoping. So we met both of our goals. We did break open the chest and we did manage to stay alive. So we were able to complete that mission with success. Let's go ahead and continue and see what else faces us. We'll do one more before we close this video off. Let's see what we've got. We're way up here still. We have to start playing in real time with input flags as you collect gold coins. So this is gonna be the first time that we're working with input handling. So that's definitely something very new and probably a new pattern that you're going to be seeing in subsequent videos. Let's go ahead and press play, see what we've got here. So we do have a new item to equip. This is the uh, equip, uh, this is a flag, this is called, let's, let's take a look at this. This is a new skill called find flag. It returns your flag of the given color if it exists. If the color is unspecified, it returns one of your flags regardless of the color. The three flag colors are green, black, and violet. It also gives us another ability called pick up flag. So let's go ahead. We'll get that into our uh, inventory here. and We'll pr press the play button. We're going to use flags to collect at least 20 gold. So let's get close here and see what it's telling us over here. We have to use flags to collect at least 20 gold. We now have access to flags. We can check the lower right for more information. You don't need to change the sample code to win. Press submit and place some flags. So that's interesting. It's telling us that we don't have to do too much to the sample code to win. Just need to press submit. Let's go ahead and start the level and see what it is that they're telling us. So the first thing they say is read the sample code to understand how flags work. Okay. For this level, you don't type any code. You just hit submit and you place flags in real time from the lower left. From the lower left. All right. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so it's telling us to press the submit button. Let's do that. Three, two, one. All right, let's place a flag. Okay. Place another flag. I'm just miscellaneously placing flags here. And as I place flags... Oh, I see. I see. I gotta be placing the flags on the coins is what I need to be doing. Got it. Let's try this again. So I'm gonna grab a flag. Alright, we'll put this on the, on the bronze. Put one over here. Put one right here. Let's see if we can get this right. Sorry, no flags. I'm not good at this. Stressing me out. Oh, I gotta change my flags. Let's go here. Oh, there's some gold. There's more gold over here. There's gold right here. Oh, I did it. All right, so that's interesting. So, so I didn't actually take a very close look at the code, and I suspect that we probably needed to. So let let me go back. It says that it says that we can continue, but I'm actually going to go back. And I'm going to take one closer look at that if we can. If we can, this is input handling again. I'm going to press play. And I'm just going to jump back in there and I'm going to take a look at the code because this is obviously something that we're going to be covering in subsequent videos. So let me go back and we'll start this thing again and I'll get a little bit closer to the code window. Now we're going to stop the video here. This is going to be the last thing that we look at, but I definitely want to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So he is starting a loop. He is actually setting a variable to flag using the find flag. He's saying if there is a flag, then go pick up the flag else say please place a flag for me to go to so the code is very very easy and then so long as there are flags on the screen then there's plenty for him to do so this is good to know and this is obviously this is something that we're going to be working on in subsequent videos so thank you so much for watching this video today join us next week we're going to be doing a lot more with input handling and we're going to see where this takes us thanks again and i'll see all of you in the next video